since you're not going out and doing a nine to five job, you're just a stay at home mom or dad. I hate that the word. The just word. You should be like, holy crap, you are a stay at home dad. That's freaking hard. Yeah. It's yeah. a hard job to do and yeah. you're doing it. You know what I mean? You're doing it well. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one-stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. Thanks to Fundrise for supporting Gold Digger. Start building your better portfolio today. Get started at fundrise.com slash gold digger to have your first 90 days of advisory fees waived. Thanks to Nutrafol for supporting Gold Digger. It's time to join the thousands of women standing up for their strands. You can grow thicker, healthier hair with Nutrafol. Go to nutrafol.com, promo code gold digger for 20% off. Did you know it has been almost an entire year since you have made an appearance on the Gold Digger podcast? I'm flying, honey. It is flying. And I just want to say welcome back to the show. Thank you for letting me be on the show. (laughs) It's going to be so fun. So today we're going to just talk about business and marriage. And I think we have a really unique perspective when it comes to how business incorporates itself into our marriage. And we've definitely been through a lot of different seasons with it. We've been married almost a decade, which is so exciting. It's crazy to think about. Super crazy. And in that decade, we've had side hustles. We've had nine to fives. We've had careers. We've had retail jobs. We've had all different kinds of working situations that have led us to the point we are today. So before we talk about where we're at today, let's kind of go back to those early days. I want you to close your eyes and visualize our first apartment, Johnson Creek. What do you remember about that place? Oh, we had like weird bedding from college and like mixed match everything <laughs> and weird plates and we shopped at Kohl's a lot for that place. We had it like, like a mile stools. Away. Yeah. So let's go back to that place. And do you remember so we had two bedrooms and we felt like we were in just this yeah, we were like massive kings. space. Yes. And we converted the second bedroom into a makeshift office. So like literally the desk and the bed were touching. And that was kind of where my whole business began. So I want to know when I kind of started my business or even just like dreaming of the business, like what were your first thoughts or impressions about the whole thing? Well, obviously it was hard because you had this constant, awesome nine to five job that was very well paying and very well you know, benefits and everything was what it should be after college. But when you said you wanted to quit and kind of do your own photography business, I was obviously taken aback. But just seeing your work ethic through college and while you're at Target and just your day-to-day life, I knew that, you know, it's it's basically, it goes back to you were right, honey. (laughs) Because (laughs) honestly, you have always like, had your head on straight. You knew what you wanted. You always had this goal and you always wanted to go get it and you knew you were going to get it. So I, yeah. it was like a trust thing mixed with my respect for you as a wife, as a person, as you know, yeah. my future. But I don't know. I was obviously very, very nervous. But at the same time, I was also very like, she's got this. Like if anybody's got this, <laughs> you freaking got this. Oh, it is funny because I even just think about Like in our first year of marriage, like the day we were at the altar, you were selling wine in grocery. No, you had lost your job. Cell phones. phones. Drew was a cell phone salesman. You were really good, but you had lost your job like unexpectedly 10 days before our wedding. And then I was working at Target and we were in this like totally different position. And so then to think I'm the secure job person and all of a sudden I'm getting ready to like jump ship and having these dreams of like, what would it look like to drop the security for this like passionate life? I think there was a lot of questions that needed to be answered before we both felt good in that move. And you know, 
I kind of want to know what was the point or do you remember any sort of like point where you're like, all right, we're going to go all in on this business. I'm going to take the back seat. You secured your next job and it was like, go, honey, you got to go for this. Yeah, I think like you said, when I lost my job, I think that lit a fire under your butt to be like, all right, this is what we need to do. And I'm 100 percent in this. So that goes back to me trusting you because that you kind of you knew you had to do it right. And you were just out there to, you know not really prove anybody wrong and be like, I got to support our squad here. So I don't know. It was just like, I need to take a step back and realizing that you were obviously had a better track record than me. I was like, all right, let's see how you do with this. Let's, let's put the ball in your court. And obviously it paid off. Well, when you say track record too, one of the things that I think makes us successful in our marriage is that we don't really like keep score, which I don't know if you remember this, but at our wedding, Pastor Jeff had said, I know you two love to play cribbage. And on our cribbage board, we used to keep track of like who had won so many games. And he was like, never keep score in your marriage. And when I think about like our careers and our lives and and where we've landed today, I would have to say that your journey is far more relatable than mine. Like you left college, you went into insurance, you studied for exams, then you went into like billboard selling, then cell phones, then I mean, you've done a lot of different things trying to figure out like, what is your passion? What is a job that you're like excited to show up for? And like, what does it look like for you to like live this like wild and curious and passionate life? And how do we make that happen? And I think there's been so many different iterations. Let's talk a little bit. I was thinking about this last night. When we found out we were pregnant the first time, do you remember sitting by the pool and we were having like a really meaningful discussion about like where we were headed? Do you remember that? You If you don't remember, that's okay. Not really. <laughs> okay. I remember we were talking. You because, have such a good memory. I and know. I'm just like, what happened yesterday? <sighs> I'll spur your memory. We were talking about this first baby that we were going to have. And you were saying, I'm not going to be able to take time off of work because it's in October and I was selling wine and there's O-N-D, October, November, December. Do you remember that? Which extended to S-O-N-D. So we had to sell (laughs) basically September through, you know, the holidays. So that was my crazy season. And when we had mentioned, oh, we might have this baby in the fall towards the holidays. And I'm like, I can't. I can't do it. I have to be at work. And I was like, what are we doing? Yes. Like, why are we killing ourselves selling wine or whatever we're doing in yeah. your careers? But I just remember back. that conversation and be and having this realization because you're like, there's no way I can take time off. And I was like, this is going to be a child. Like, what do you yeah. mean? And I think it was a pivotal moment, even if you don't remember it, it was pivotal in the fact of we need to figure out like what kind of life we want to bring a child into and also like how are we going to make that happen? And at that point, I was also a wedding photographer. So my first reaction was, when is my due date and how many weddings am I going to have to cancel and what is that going to look like? And I think looking back in hindsight, it's kind of crazy that like we were worried about this big dream of growing our family around these jobs, whether we built them or not. It's crazy to look back at how much has changed and how our perspective is like the complete 180. Yeah. Like what's so, more important in life? Yeah. But, and I mean, it's a total massive privilege now to have choices around this because yeah. a lot of people don't. And at the time we didn't, we just had to figure out what are we going to give up? Like, what's it going to look like to make something different than what we're living in. I want to know, you know, we got a taste of what it would be like to run a business together when we decided that you were going to launch the Kutcher Method, which was your accountability, fitness, health coaching business. Which I'm passionate about. So I wanted to figure out a way to, you know, a little bit of a a passion project, but, you know, make some money doing it. You know, what kind of makes me laugh about that is in reality, I'm The Kutcher method to me was like this like launch pad while we were trying to figure out how long is this going to take for us to grow our family and what is Drew going to do while he waits for his dream to be a stay-at-home dad? Because it took us three years to get Coco and you were like, I I really want to be a stay-at-home dad. I'm like, well, cool, but you can't be like a stay-at-home husband. So what are we going to do? So the Kutcher method was the solution. Yeah. So that and becoming a CrossFit coach, I wanted to kind of take that and run with it. And it was honestly just like a waiting period 
for Coco to come. We'll see if this sticks, you know, we'll see if this career choice, this, you know, entrepreneurial journey works and having Jenna kind of like light me up every day. Like, so you gotta how do was this? it? You got to do this? You got to do that? I'm like, screw it. I'm Coco. Let's go. So it, was, <laughs> it took, uh, it took some hard times, but I was, it was more of just like a babysitting myself until Coco came. Well, and it was super interesting. I mean, let's be honest. I don't think either of us ever want to run a business together. That's never been a part of our plan. It, nope. I don't think it would be good for our relationship. And so it was really funny when Drew was launching his business because obviously I had all this experience. I had made all of these mistakes. And the one thing that a teacher wants is to not have someone make those same mistakes. And so... <laughs> It was hilarious because I would give advice. Sometimes you would take it. Sometimes you would ignore it. But I think we both established like, I think it's smart to keep things a little bit more separate and to allow us to kind of learn on our own curve, which was interesting. Mm -hmm. It was fun. I don't know if I'd do it again, but it was fun. No, it totally it knows what not to do. Yeah. Totally. Taught us what not to do. I think, you know, it's interesting because some of our friends are in husband and wife like business partnerships. And then some people are like, I wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole. And I think we're on that second end of the spectrum because we just want our relationship to be our relationship. And I think I've always looked at like if work life balance is a thing that we are striving for, if that's a thing, then you have to have a separation between work and life for that to even exist. And if our marriage was a part of the work, where would the life happen? And so for me, it's just never been a desire. So if someone is running their business as like a side hustle, which both of us did at certain points of our lives, the time that they have to work on their business likely overlaps with time that they would usually be spending with their partner or their friends or their roommate or their family. Usually what happens when there are people in a relationship and one of them is the entrepreneur and the one that's driven, the other one usually ends up in this supportive role. And we've seen it with a ton of our friends. We've seen so many of the spouses kind of have to understand that sometimes a business is going to have to take the front seat. Sometimes your spouse is going to be up at three in the morning with a new creative idea that they can't wait to execute. And I think it's super interesting because usually when we go on retreats, you end up hanging out with the other wives or the the husbands of the entrepreneurs. And there's almost this connection between you guys because you are the ones who are used to living with these dreamers that are always full speed ahead and on to the next thing. So can you talk about that just a little bit? Well, it's obviously it's just seeing you day to day and you're so fired up to go to work that in the afternoon or at night when I'm cooking dinner and you're like, hey, babe, can I just pop on to Slack, you know, for 10 minutes? I just need to get this off my plate. You know what I mean? So Seeing in you the passion and the drive, it kind of allows for the freedom later. You don't want to stop somebody from dreaming and from driving away at their goal or getting something off of their mind. They need to focus on things. So it's like, all right, why would I be the one to hold you back when this is a partnership thing here? I respect you. I totally agree that we should be together as a family. But right now, totally take your time and talk to your team, get whatever you need to get done, done. Yeah. And I think we've come a long way with this because yeah. I used to burn the candle on every end when it came to work and I was never really present. And I think that, you know, a few years into my business, I realized like I'm missing out on life. Like these ideas can wait. And I think we just work at a very different pace now. There's a lot more balance. I think motherhood has been a huge factor in I that. I was going to say having Coco around obviously makes you want to kind of lay off of work and focus yeah. on her a little more. Yeah. And you even said like last night, you're like, you've been really good at just like leaving your work at the door, not bringing it in and just being like fully present, even if you're tired or you're excited or you're creatively driven. Having a separate space where we live too is also very productive for that because you can set it at the door, set it in the other unit and not even have to think about it. Yeah. You're just totally immersed in Coco and me and it's the best. Like when you first started, obviously you had tons of, can I go step out? Can I do this? Can I do that? Can I, you just loved what you were doing, but now having the system in place, it's huge. Yeah.
moms, you know, postpartum hair loss, it is a real thing. And even if you're not a mom or you're not planning to be, did you know that 30 million women are impacted by weakened or thinning hair? Now, if you're among them, you're not alone and there's a solution you can trust to deliver results. Thousands of women have taken back control of their hair with Nutrafol, with many users raving that the supplement not only transformed their hair, but restored their confidence too. Nutrafol offers two targeted formulas for women that are clinically shown to improve hair growth and thickness with less shedding through all stages of life. Healthier hair growth, it takes time. You'll begin to experience thicker, stronger, faster growing hair in three to six months. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after six months. More than 1,500 top doctors recommend Nutrafol as an effective and high quality solution for healthier hair. I'm a few months into the process and taking Nutrafol has become a part of my daily routine. I cannot wait to see my final results. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and using the promo code Gold Digger. And new customers will get 20% off. This is their best offer available anywhere, plus free shipping on every order. Get 20% off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code Gold Digger. We've heard that it's important to have a diversified portfolio. Stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and the most successful portfolios typically include a diversified set of real estate too. So why isn't it one of the first things you consider when you're looking to diversify? Well, it hasn't been available to investors like you and me until now, thanks to Fundrise. Fundrise is an investing platform that makes investing in high quality, high potential real estate as easy as investing in your favorite stock or mutual fund. Whether you're looking to add stable cash flow via dividends or prefer long-term growth through appreciation, Fundrise has you covered. Here's how it works. Fundrise's team of real estate professionals carefully vets and actively manages all of their real estate projects. You just have to create an account at fundrise.com slash gold digger, choose your portfolio strategy, and watch as your dollars are diversified across a series of investment funds tailored to your selected strategy. And with their easy-to-use website, you can track your portfolio's performance and watch as properties across the country are acquired, improved, and operated via asset updates. Knowledge is power when it comes to investing, and I love the level of education Fundrise gives to its investors so that you can feel confident diversifying your portfolio. Get started at Fundrise.com slash Gold Digger to have your first 90 days of advisory fees waived. That's F-U-N-D-R-I-S-E dot com slash Gold Digger to have your first 90 days of advisory fees waived. Fundrise.com slash Gold Digger. It's been really interesting too, because I think that if you are the creative person, when you get that idea or that passion or you hit that flow state, it's hard for someone on the outside to even understand what that feels like. And so when it's like just one more thing or one more email or one more, like when you're just so excited to be doing that, like we see that with so many of our friends where it's like they get an idea and they're like working on it till 4 a.m. the next day. And you're like, wait, what? And I think that it takes a very special person to be married to the ideas person, to know the appropriate times to push back, to know when to just let them go, to know when to challenge them. And so it's super interesting. I love talking to our friends' spouses and like their support group, because I think that that is a role that is often overlooked and underappreciated. I think it also helps too, when you put it in like analogies of something that I would be passionate about, like I'll let you, you know, think of you at the gym or whatever, like some weird scenario. Cleaning. Yeah, cleaning <laughs> is huge. But it kind of like in your brain, it's like, okay, they love doing this. So I'm going to yeah. let them do that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the thing too, is like painting these dreams or like future pacing for your spouse or your partner or your family so that they understand what this hard work will mean for you and for them in the future. Because a lot of times if they see that grind, that hustle, that, you know, working around the clock, it's hard to understand what could possibly be worth it while you're doing it. And so understanding the ability to like future pace and teach them like, if I can do this one thing and get it done, here's what this means for us. I think that also really helps other people outside of your own little bubble really buy into what you're working on. You're really good at doing that. I'm a huge visual learner. (laughs) So you're always putting things in like examples that 
my little brain understands. Yeah. <laughs> which I appreciate. I remember, it's so funny. We talk about this all the time, but like when you listen to like a certain podcast or read something and you remember where you were when you were learning it, I remember we were walking in in the cul-de-sac outside of our first house and we were talking about this piece of marriage advice that I heard that I think is still so pertinent. And it was basically like when your spouse gets home or comes in from their office or finishes up work, like give them just a few minutes of uninterrupted time for them to tell you about their day and for you to explain what you did for that day and then just get back to living in the present. And I think that we subconsciously do that. So it's like we come in like, hey, what'd you guys do today? Like, how was your day? And then we kind of just get back to living instead of constantly explaining everything. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, also too, it's different. We've had this for a long time, but you don't have like a commute home yeah. to like decompress. Yes. So yes. you're like, boom, there's Coco in here. Yes. The My brain and, is whoa. still like moving 8 million miles a minute. Like we I'm go really on a lot of walks. That you're able to dial it down right away. Yeah. Like, okay. Whole different genre yes. of life right here. Yes. I like think about like in the spring and summer when we went on our daily walks and I would like grab my phone because I'd still be processing like a thought, but I'd mm-hmm. be like singing a song to Coco. But I like my brain was just like trying to like switch gears. But I've gotten real good at it. Very good at it. You yeah. like honed it in. I have. You know, and I think it's interesting too because – So Drew's current role, so we can kind of transition. So we had the Kutcher method, then Coco came along, and then you transitioned into one of the most meaningful, probably the most meaningful role of your life as a stay-at-home rewarding job I've ever had. I've had like 20 Uh, jobs. Yeah. And I I think what's interesting too is like when I come in, like I want to hear about your day, but I don't need to hear every detail. The same way that you want to hear about my day, but you don't need to hear every detail. And so we've yeah. gotten good at giving the highlights. Like a highlight reel, like yeah. a top five of the day. Kind yeah, of yeah. <laughs> and I highly encourage that because I think that it's so important to like be non-distracted and like listen to one another, but then just like get back to living. I think a lot of times we want to validate ourselves or like pat ourselves on the back or all these things. And it's like, take five minutes to have like undistracted conversation and then like get back into life, you Mm -hmm. know? Where some days you come in and it's just a fire blazing in the house. We're all having fun. But we do that top five, maybe at the end of the night. It's not always right away when you come in, but we have at least like recap our days for each other, you know? I feel like it happened last night when you were brushing your teeth. Yeah, (laughs) pretty much. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So... Do you have any advice for couples who want to go into business together? We don't really know what that's like. So I don't know if we feel like we're appropriate to give that. If you're in business together, make sure they're totally separate roles in the business. Yes. One is like the HR payroll and one is a creative or whatever. (laughs) Yeah. I think like own your, your skill and like have that separation, like almost allow yourself to work in a silo in the sense of if you're constantly like checking in on each other or like having to make decisions together. I think we can learn something from Steve Jobs who wore the same outfit every single day. Like decision fatigue is real. And if you're making so many decisions together in your business, how do you make decisions for your life? And I think too, just like you and I have very different skill sets. And so if you can figure out what your strength is and then let the other person run with theirs, that would be my advice. But I, I say. If, yeah. if you're asking for advice for people that want to do something that we don't particularly do, totally hone your craft, but don't go past your boundary. Like yeah. stay within what you know and respect the other person to be able to get the job done on their end and leave it at that. Yeah. I think too, we do do this in like some aspects. Like, so Drew is a stay at home dad, but he also manages our properties. And I'm the kind of person where I'm like, I don't want to know anything. Like you tell me the littlest amount of information I need to know to understand or to to give my input or whatever. But I want to let you just like run with that. And I think that a lot of times what happens when people are in relationships and they go into business together is a lot of micromanaging. And I think that's where a lot of the stress and the pressure and the expectations kind of crumble. And so it's like, we operate on a very like need to know basis. And there's very few things that you actually need to know. And I think that just gives one another the confidence to like just own that part of like our roles. And I mean, it's so funny because I think about like 
do you remember when we were standing in our kitchen talking to my grandparents and you told my grandpa, like, I'm going to be a stay at home dad. And he was like, okay, oh. what are you actually going to be doing? Though? Yeah. Like, yeah. When you got to go to the factory for work? <laughs> yeah. It was just, you know, we've had to figure out our own roles. And someone recently told us that like, you guys are unstoppable when you live in that zone of genius and you allow one another to like embrace your gifts and really like just go after them. And so it's funny because I think for a long time, we like fought those traditional roles. Yep. Yep. And now it's like, we are all in. We're, yep. we're opposite. The guy needs to make the money. The woman needs to, needs to stay at home. No, it's like totally opposite. It's whatever works for you. Yeah. However that picture looks and ours is totally unconditional and weird and different. Yeah. And I love to cook and clean and it is what it is. Yeah. I love that. I love that too. <laughs> what is your advice for someone who wants to start a business, but keep it separate from their relationship? That's like kind of how we operate. Yeah. Like you were saying before, like, you run the business. I run the home. Yep. Let me know kind of what you're doing, but I don't want to know too much, obviously. Like I want to, I want to keep it separate because I don't need to know. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to be overwhelmed or give you any, any advice because I don't have any, but um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like be supportive, but be separate. I love that about us. I think it actually shocks people. Like you don't really listen to my podcast or well, read my blogs. We'll be in or... an event and they're like, oh, how are you guys doing with this? Po-? I'm like, obviously, I don't know what she's doing <laughs> with the podcast. I don't know what Jenna's doing. Ask her because I don't really know. Yeah. And it's and not out by, of... By design. Yes. It's, it's intentional because it's like we're living our life. Like there's nothing that he needs to know beyond like our moments together. And I think that there's like this beautiful separation that happens where it's like, Hey, here's the things we're working on, or here's what I'm super excited about, or here's what I'm thinking about. But beyond that, there's really no need for him to get involved. I love that. Like, I think it's really healthy for us. At first, I kind of thought it was, you know, I I should be there hundred percent invested and know what you're doing just because as the husband, I want to be there to know what's going on. But you're like, no, totally okay if you're if you're not. And I'd rather you not be yeah. up in my biz. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. What has it been like for you to pivot out of a traditional job or a title or any of those things that kind of our culture tells us are important to be a stay-at-home dad? I was thinking about that the other day, actually, because when we were talking about doing this podcast together and I was just thinking about all the bosses I had and managers I had and employees and every day it's so nice to wake up and not have to check emails and yeah. and wait for, you know, something, a meeting on Friday or whatever. And it's once I realized that I don't need to be anywhere and that this is kind of like my importance in life is taking care of a child is a thousand times better than going to work and just I'm embracing it and taking it in and, and owning it, I guess, was yeah. It took a little bit of time, but once once I figured it out, it's been yeah. like the most rewarding and tough thing in my whole world. Yeah. We had a conversation the other day because I was like, How do you want me to describe your role to other people? Because I think in a world that we hold so much weight with titles and domestic engineer. Yeah, domestic engineer. Well, and I was like, do you want me to like introduce you as like the property manager or the stay at home dad or like what, you know? And it was just interesting because I think a lot of people, we find our identity in our work. Mm-hmm. And so if that title is taken away or you pivot or you change or you're taking the back seat to let your spouse run it can really mess with like your psyche and your ego. And Especially you were like, being no. The, being the male counterpart where it's like, what's your title? Like, what do you do? I take care of the house. Yeah. And yeah. that's cool with me. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah. So I think I just want to encourage people to, to have those discussions with one another about what that looks like. Because even though you're okay with me saying like, he's a stay at home dad, for some people, if you were to say they're just the mom or they're just, that can be crippling and devastating. And so I think it's super important to like navigate each iteration of your career, your job, your dreams, and check in with people. Like, how do you want me to describe you? What title do you want to wear with pride? How do you want me to explain this season? Because I think a lot of times when you're fighting your reality, it's because you're worried about what the world is going to say about it. Yeah. And it's just strange because since you're not going out and doing a nine to five job, you're just 
a stay at home mom or dad. I hate that the word. The just word. You should be like, holy crap, you are a stay at home dad. That's freaking hard. Yeah. It's yeah. a hard job to do and yeah. you're doing it. You know what I mean? You're doing it well. So it's, I don't know. It's weird. It's, yeah. it, you got to like look at it and totally flip the perspective on it. But definitely. We've been definitely like trying to find ways to honor one another in the roles too. And like, we're constantly like tweaking, like what schedule works best? Like how can we support each other best? It's like this like tag team effort. And obviously we're so, so lucky that like this is the reality that you get to stay home, that I can work from home, that we're all in this together. And that's not the reality for so many people. But I think doing these sort of check-ins of like, where do you need support or what's one thing I can do? Or like, if I come in to eat lunch and I see laundries going and like stopping to fold the laundry or things like that, like it's just these little things of like, I see you, I honor you, I want to support you. That was huge when you came in and folded the laundry the other day. I was super pumped. I know, right? I loved it. Pretty great. Oh, we're watching our monitor and Coco is sitting up during her nap. Hopefully she lays back down. See, this is the reality of so many people's lives this year, though, is it's like this juggle of like figuring and finding these windows of time to do the things that are on your task list. And, you know, sometimes you got to watch baby monitor and get stuff done. (laughs) So what are you most excited about for this coming year? You know, this past year has just been such a unique year, one that we'll probably talk about for the rest of our lives. But is there anything you're really excited about? Stay at home, dad, land? Well, the bigger and bigger that Coco gets. I want to see her go skiing with us and playing in the snow. But no, I don't know. I think I'm excited actually to start trying for kids again. Which is crazy. Not like super soon, but in the near future. I know. Because I'm excited to, at first I wanted just to hog Coco for ourselves, but I think she'll be an amazing big sister. Yeah, it is. It's kind of terrifying to like think about throwing ourselves back into that ring of like that position of growth. And I think there's so many questions like, how could I possibly love another person as much as we love her? And what is that going to look like career wise and work wise and an adjustment? But I think too, I'm really excited to go through every stage again, kind of knowing that like everything is so fleeting and temporary. How much more chill are we going to be? I think we were super chill. (laughs) Anyway, so it's kind of terrifying. I know. I know. It might be a little little too easy for us at times. Uh, oh, gosh. We'll get slapped in the face yeah. the next day. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, well, thanks for coming back on the podcast. Thank you for having me. It was so fun. And any parting words, Mr. Kutcher? I got to go vacuum. <laughs> That's actually probably the most accurate closing statement this show has ever had. Okay. Love you much. Talk to you soon in Love like you. two minutes. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 